Good morning once again. Uh, I thank in a special way uh, Father Adams and uh, the rector of the cathedral and his associates and the liturgical team for inviting me uh, to join with you this year in your Lenten mission. Uh, coming to the cathedral is like coming back home. Uh, cathedral has been a home and remains a home for me today till tomorrow. So it's like coming back home uh, to my homeland. So I thank you in a special way for uh, asking me to come to be with you. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. When we look at the readings of today, uh, beginning from the first reading uh, through the gospel reading, and then Paul bringing it out in a way in the, in the second reading, we see the Lord inviting us to one thing, which we see at the end of the gospel reading. Then from the cloud came a voice that was found, sorry, came a voice that said, this is my chosen son, listen to him. The Lord is inviting us in a special way to a renewed discipleship, to a renewed fellowship with him in his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what the Lenten season is all about. It's an invitation for a new figure, a new enthusiasm, a new seal in our relationship with God to renew it, to make it alive again through our, our, our observance of, you know, fasting, abstinence, through prayer, and through unscathing. The Lord is inviting us. But when we look at the first reading, the book of Genesis, Abraham, when you read a little bit ahead before where we read today, remember in Genesis 12, from 1, the Lord invited Abraham to leave his people and to go to a place that he will send him and that he will bless him and through him he will bless the whole world that those that bless him shall be blessed and he will multiply him and make him numerous then days months years have passed abraham have not seen anything he has no child and after some time he started to get discouraged about the whole thing is it really what trusting in this god am i really making a mistake is it, am I really on the right path? We need to examine this again with God. And he took God to task and said, Lord, you made me all these promises. You told me all these things. But I'm getting old. My wife is getting old. And we don't even have a child. My inheritance will go to my servant. And now you make all this promise. And that's when we come to the reading of today. The Lord took him outside and said, look to the sky. Can you count the stars? That's how your children will be like. And Abraham is like, yeah, I'll be hearing about that so many years now. Now show me a sign. Tell me something that I can hold on to. Show me a sign that will tell me that yes, it is worth following you. And that's when the Lord said, okay, get me animals, hatred and other animals, three old each, and get them, cut them into two and place them against each other. That's all. Just do that for me, and I will show you some his sign. And then, in the evening, when it's dark, a torch of fire, smoke of fire, came and passed through those animals. One will be wondering, like, what is God doing? Is he just, you know, playing a video game with Abraham, or is he doing what? In reality, it is something so powerful that God has shown Abraham. And he understood what God did because it was something that is very common in the Mesopotamian world where Abraham, Abraham lived in those days. In those days, when people, two people want to make a covenant or two parties want to make a covenant, one of the most serious ways to make those covenants is that they will get an animal and cut the animal into two and they will place the animal against each other. Then the, the one of the parties that is making the covenant, they will read out the terms of the covenant. 
and after reading out the, the things of the covenant, then the person will now walk across those animals. And as he's walking across the animal, we'll be saying, let what happened to this animal happen to me if I do not keep my part of the covenant. And that's what God did for Abraham. The Lord swore an oath to Abraham. The Lord, and immediately after that, the Bible said, that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. It is the establishment of that covenant. The Lord is telling Abraham, I will stand by my word. I will fulfill every word that has come out of my mouth. And if I do not, let what happened to these animals happen to me. When I read it, it just brings chills over my body. How God could come so low just to prove to me and you how much he will stand by us, no matter what the situation is. His faithfulness, his constancy. We may abandon God. We may turn away from him. We may grow cold, but God never moves away from his works. Sometimes in our life, because of the experience we go through, we start to ask ourselves the question, am I really making the right choice? What have I really gained by following God? I go to Mass, I go to church, I say my prayer, read the Bible and all that. What have I really gained? Following Him, what is the fruit of it? There are certain experiences in our life that make us to put question mark on our faith, and on our trust on God. And sometimes they have shaken our faith. And sometimes we've even pulled away from God. It's not worrying. I don't see anything. I'm not convinced anymore. Things are not happening the way they should. And it is the same experience in the gospel reading. Christ is now about to begin his journey into Jerusalem. The journey he will not come back. The journey that will lead him to the cross. The journey that we read lead him to a humble and the, you know, a, a disastrous death. And he know his apostles will see him suffer and die. And he know it may be for them a discouragement. It may be for them so scandalous that this man they believe that is the Messiah. This man they believe had the power of God to do all things. This man they look unto who will overcome the powers of the Romans and exalt again the glory of Israel. This man who will restore Israel in his peak and power again will rather be crucified like a thief. They may not understand it. They may get discouraged. And God knew that some experience of our life do discourage us. And what did he do? He took them up to the mountain. To show them the glory that awaits them. To show them the end of all this. Although the experience may be difficult. Although the experience may be discouraging. But after that, there is something. That's not the end of everything. So he showed them the glory that they will experience at the end of their life. If they persevere. And this glory is just a tiny thing that Paul said. That no eye have seen, no ears have heard, no mind have ever conceived it. What God prepared for those that love Him. And showing them that glory, He encouraged them. He strengthened them. So that when they begin to go through the difficult times, they will remember the glory that awaits them and they will not fall back. And in the same way, the Lord invites us in our own journey of faith. We find ourselves at different stage of our journey of faith. Some of the things that are happening in our life now, we understand them. Some of them, we don't. Some of them, we have the explanation. Some of them, we don't have explanation. And some of them, the more we pray, it looks like things are getting more difficult. The more we call on the Lord, it looks like he has gone on vacation. 
The more we do novenas and ask people to pray for us, it looks like maybe his siesta, he overslept during his siesta. But none of this is real. God is still God. And that's why the Father's voice came from the cloud and said, Behold, my beloved son, listen to him. My dear friends, one of the things that we know, there is always something larger and bigger than we are. There is always something more than we know. Remember, our world in which, that, in which we live in is just this space. But the universe is like from the end of that world to the end of that world. No matter our technological advancement, no matter our scientific discoveries, no matter our ingenuity and knowledge, no matter what we can discover on earth, we know only an iota of what is. We are so limited, even in our own world. We discovered the moon, we discovered the internet, we discovered everything. Great, but still we know those are nothing in comparison to the wisdom of God. And that is sometimes, it makes you wonder, sometimes we tend to instruct God, we tend to tell God, wake up man, you are in the old age, we are in the jet age, sometimes we need to tell him, update your database, it's so, so old now. Get your laptop updated because it's so old, you don't understand it again. We tend to tell him things, but the reality is, he is God. Who created this universe? Who created this world? Who created each and every one of us? And therefore, he knows more than we can ever know in our life. And that's why he asks us, listen to my son. That if we listen to him, he knows the way. He is the life. He is the truth. And he will lead us to all this. But when I think that I know more than him, and I will now try to let him change his diary or update his database so that it will synchronize with our own database because now we know more than him, it doesn't work. So these three days, the Lord invites us to come, to listen to that his son speak to us. He invites us to come, not only to listen, but to follow. He asks us to come, not only to follow, but to believe in him. So our theme for the discussion within these three days will be faith. The wisdom that we share is not the wisdom of the world, but it's the wisdom that is beyond that the wisdom of the world. It's the wisdom that is of heaven. And that's what Paul is saying therefore in the second reading. Our, our home is in heaven. We live in this world, but this is not all that is. There is something more. And only Him can reveal that to us. When we come and join Him on that mountain, as Peter, James and John did, He will reveal Himself to us. He will reveal His glory to us. Let us come these three days to join Him in this mountain of Tabor, in this our cathedral, in this our homeland of worship. And we believe by His grace, He will reveal His glory to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.